Okay, I would like you guys to title this page Proportions. And before we begin, I want you to quickly turn and talk to your neighbor. How did you start doing the do now when I asked you to come up with equivalent fractions? Turn and talk to each other. What'd you do? I just started I'm hearing a lot of the same thing. A lot of you are saying, I basically multiplied the numerator and denominator by the same thing. Is that yes? Yeah. Okay. Well, when we're dealing with proportions, here's what I want you to think about. I know this is probably a new vocabulary word for you, but equivalent, you already know, right? Equivalent comes from the word equal. Do you see the word equal at the beginning of this? Mm -hmm. And you guys know when you were multiplying your equivalent fractions, the numerator and denominator by the same thing, you were keeping them equivalent, but changing the way they were divided up, right? Well, we have what we call equivalent ratios. And remember, there's three ways to write ratios, but we tend to write them in the form where they look like fractions. But ratios are comparing two different things. Today we're going to be dealing with ratios that are just numbers though. They really do look like fractions and we don't really know what they're comparing. Just to practice this idea. Equivalent ratios are what we call proportional. And I want you to think, again, what do you know about equivalent fractions? If I multiply or divide by the same thing, I'm keeping them equivalent, true? It's kind of like that balancing act where we're keeping things on the same place. That's what's happening with proportions, too. It's two ratios, and we're, if they are equivalent, they are proportional. Okay? So, let's try with a couple of examples, and this is where I want you to have your calculators open and ready, because we're going to be using them quite a bit today. If I said that I have, let me try, yeah, this number, two-thirds and four-sixths. The question is, are they proportional? Do they equal each other? And I'm seeing heads nodding because you're using what you know about fraction rules and you're looking at this and saying, I know that two times two is four and three times two is six, so they are proportional, yes? When we start working with proportions though, this is the way we would actually write a proportion. Let me give you the definition first. A proportion is two ratios that are equivalent. There's a lot of math words in there. I should have said a proportion is an equation. Sorry, correcting myself here. A proportion is an equation that is two ratios that are equivalent. So it has an equal sign because it's an equation. So let me go back to our example up above. I could write this as a proportion like this. So what's kind of cool about that is if I have a proportion with part of it missing, like what if I had 6 tenths is equal to 
something over 80. We can use what we know to find the missing part. What do you guys notice is happening between 10 and 80? What's it being multiplied by? Eight. Mm -hmm. So then I can multiply this times 8. And what would we get? 48. Okay, so I think that's going to be enough for you guys to practice this today, and we'll move on with this idea further tomorrow. Um, we'll do a few practice problems together. I did ask you guys to have a piece of binder paper. Yes? And I think it's the one you did some work on before that still has room, true? So maybe use the back of it or draw a line underneath. And let's label this section as 4-3. I'm going to use the back of a piece of paper. And I'm going to write some problems down that are actually in your textbook. So when you guys get to independent work, we're working on page 224. And I'm going to do a few problems with you that look like what's in the book so that you guys know what is being asked of you. Number two, the question is determine, and you don't need to write this down, I'm just writing it for you to see it, determine whether the ratios are proportional. So we're just going to say yes or no. Okay? So if I'm given the ratios 5 tenths and 6 eighteenths, oh no, 8 eighteenths, are they proportional? Why are we saying no? You're right, they, it is, they, they are not proportional, but who can tell me why? Monty, what did you do in your head to say no? Because you can't multiply 5 to equal 8. True. You cannot multiply 5 to equal 8. Catherine, you want to add to that? Um, you can multiply it by 2 and 9 to 18, which is like 1 to 5 tenths. So it's close, but not It's close, right? They're clo both close to half. But 5 tenths is exactly equal to half, and is 8 eighteenths equal to half? Mm -hmm. No, as she just said, if this was a 9, 9 over 18 would be equal to 1 half, and then it would be pro proportional to this or equivalent, right? Let's try another one like that together. Number 3 is 9 over 12 and 15 over 20. Are these proportional? Really, what am I asking? Are these equivalent, right? It's just new language with a similar concept to what we've used before. Yeah, they're not nice, easy, pretty numbers like 2 thirds and 4 sixths, are they? So can I show you guys a trick? And this is where your calculator comes in handy. If these are a proportion, and we don't know yet, we don't know if these are equal, that's why I'm going to put a question mark there, then I should be able to do what's called cross-multiply. I should be able to multiply these two numbers and these two numbers and have them come out the same. So using your calculator, what is 12 times 15? I got 180 for 12 times 15. What about 9 times 20? It's also 180, isn't it? That means that this is proportional. So this is where it takes a little bit of a turn away from what you guys know about equivalent fractions 
because do these look equivalent? We would used to be thinking of this as going, well, let's multiply 12 times 2, and I'd have a denominator of 24. What do I do when it's a denominator of 20? Right? Well, you can cross multiply to check those. Okay, question? Comment? That's another way. Mm -hmm. But with what we're going to be working on in the coming days, I want you to start practicing cross multiplying because it will help with what we're doing soon. Okay? All right, you will also have problems that say things like this. Number nine in the book says find a ratio equivalent to each ratio, then use the ratios to write a proportion. And number nine is one third. Who can tell me a ratio that is equivalent to that? Go ahead. Sure. It's as simple as that. So you'll have a few problems like that. And then I'm going to give you guys a little bit of challenge to see what you can do with some missing numbers. So on your contract, I want you to write for 4-3 on page 224. You're doing numbers 13 through 30. And hopefully most of you will finish in class, and when you do, I want you to go to STMath.